Now, it's only one characteristic of a true experiment, and a true experiment needs at least one more thing, which is control. So all experiments exert some control in the world, specifically that extraneous variables are held constant across the levels of the independent variable. Now, this needs some unpacking. Let's start with extraneous variables. Extraneous variables are variables that have some relationship to the dependent variable, the thing we measure, but are not of direct interest in the experiment. So thinking back to that caffeine example with exam scores, an extraneous variable might just be how much somebody has studied. Right? This is certainly something that will relate to somebody's exam score, but that's not the direct interest of the experiment. And we hope that when we do an experiment, that we actually maintain that study time or how much somebody knows or any other variable that relates to exam score are constant across the levels of the independent variable. And remember, the levels of the independent variable are just the conditions we have, so whether somebody got caffeine or not before the exam. So what we're stating here is that we hope that every other variable that relates to exam score is pretty much the same in our group of students who got caffeine and the other group of students who didn't. In that way, we have controlled the extraneous variables in the world so that we get a unique or specific measure of the effect of the independent variable. Now, for true experiments, the main way of doing this is through random assignment. Random assignment states that chance alone dictates what treatment each individual receives. Now, this one deserves its own slide because this is an incredibly important point in the characteristics of a true experiment. Again, Random assignment is the process of assigning treatments, the levels of the independent variable, to subjects so that only chance is responsible for which treatment each subject receives. Now think about this. In that experiment with caffeine and exam scores, we don't want people choosing whether to drink caffeine or not before an exam. If individuals got to choose, there might be substantial differences between the types of individuals who are taking caffeine before an exam. Notice that it might be the case that individuals who have studied more tend to drink more coffee. That may or may not be true, but if we don't know that, we can't allow individuals to self-select into their different conditions. But if we randomly assign individuals to conditions such that chance alone is the only thing deciding whether they get caffeine or not, this will ensure that there are no systematic differences across the groups before treatment. That is, Groups will only differ due to chance on all those other variables that we don't measure. Now, we'll come back to random assignment and we'll look at some of the consequences of random assignment, but don't miss this very last point. Groups will differ on extraneous variables. If I randomly assign some group of people to take caffeine before an exam and another group to not, those two groups won't be exactly the same on average in the amount of study time or the amount that they know of the exam or whatever other variables might have some relationship to the DV. Those groups will differ, but the difference between the groups will be due completely to chance. And chance is something that we are going to get a handle on. Through probability, we'll be able to understand exactly how much difference there should be due to chance. Systematic differences are very hard to know, but if we've randomly assigned, we can grapple with the differences that are likely to occur between the groups of individuals. So with these characteristics, manipulation, and some type of control over extraneous variables, true experiments gain one very important property. They can provide evidence of causality. Now this, of course, is why true experiments are needed for any kind of FDA drug trials, or for any type of situation where we really need to know whether one thing is causing something else. Only true experiments can definitively show causation. Correlational experiments, no matter how fancy the statistics, can never truly show causation.